Let's first talk about what is a noun at all. So a noun is a person, place, animal, or concept. Okay, here are examples. Barack Obama, that's a person. Paris, that's a place. A tiger, that's an animal. Society, that's a concept. Happiness, that's a concept. So these are all nouns. Every verb that you see in English will fall into one of two categories. It will either be countable or it will be uncountable. It's important to know which category a noun belongs to because that will determine the specific grammar that you need to use with it, which I'm going to explain next. Countable nouns, you can count. Okay, that's why it is uh, named countable. So that means you can have one, two, three, and so on. And when you have one of a countable noun, you can use a or an. So this is the first grammar concept that's important to understand with countable versus uncountable. With countable nouns, you can use a or an when you have one. For example, I have a car. Car is a countable noun because you can have one car or two cars or three cars or four cars. You can count the number of cars. I have an apple. You can have one apple or two apples or three apples and so on. Apple is a countable noun. When you have more than one of a countable noun, then you can add S at the end to make it plural. I have cars, or I have two cars, or three cars. I have apples, or I have two apples, or three apples. Right? So with countable nouns, you can add a or an, and you can add s at the end to make it plural. However, in English, there are many exceptions. Meaning, there are many countable nouns that you cannot make plural simply by adding s. The plural form is different. It's irregular, more complicated. For example, child. Childs, with an s, is not a word. To make child plural, you have to add ren, children. So you can have one child, but then you have two children three children, and so on. Same thing with person. Persons is not the plural of person. What's tricky is this is technically a word in English, but it's used in a very specific context. The plural of person is people. So if you type persons into Microsoft Word or Grammarly, it won't always detect this problem. So you have to remember that People is the plural of person. You should not use persons. Foot. Foots is not a word. The plural is feet. And mouse. Mouses is not a word. The plural is mice. And man. The plural is not mans, but rather men. And woman. The plural is not woman's. It is woman. So these are the most common countable nouns that have irregular plural forms. So I would recommend memorizing these, but also know that you will encounter other irregular plurals. And when you do, you should note that and try to remember it. The other topic to cover quickly is a versus an. I see many non-native English speakers struggle to understand when they should use a and when they should use an. So both are used when talking about one of a countable noun. So I have a car, I have an apple. We're talking about one of a countable noun. The rule is that you put an in front of a countable noun when the first sound of the noun is a vowel. So the reason we have an is because it sounds better when we speak it. So let me give you some examples. An apple, an apple. The first sound of apple is a. 
a. That's a vowel, a, a. So an apple is easier to say than a apple. See how I have to kind of cut my voice, a apple, a apple. It doesn't sound very nice. It's much more fluid to say an apple, an apple. Or an idea, I, I is a vowel, it's a vowel sound. An idea sounds much better than a idea, a idea. Okay, an elephant, an elephant, same thing. So all of these examples, the first sound is a vowel, and the first letter is a vowel. However, with a word like our, the first sound is a vowel, but the first letter is not a vowel. It's an H. So although there's an H there, it's kind of silent. And the first sound of our is ow, ow. That's a vowel sound, o, oh, ow, which means we put an in front of it because it sounds better. So an hour sounds better than a hour, a hour. It's the same problem we had with the other examples. We have a followed by a vowel sound, and that requires us to kind of cut our voice, and it doesn't sound good. So it's very natural to say an hour. And because we say that, then we have to write it that way as well. Another example is an honest person. So in this case, honest is an adjective. It's not a noun. However, in English, we put adjectives before nouns. And the first sound of honest is ah, ah, that's a vowel sound. So it's very natural to say an honest person. And therefore, we put an before. So this is tricky in English um, because it's really about the sound um, of the word that comes after a or an. But your brain will develop this over time as you spend time in English, speaking English and listening to English. But the thing to remember is it's not necessarily the letter, right? It is the sound. Is the first sound a vowel sound? That's what determines if you use a or an. Let's now talk about uncountable nouns. Uncountable nouns cannot be counted. So un means not, so literally uncountable means not countable, which means you can't have one, two, or three of them. Examples, water. You can't have one water, or two waters, or three waters, right? Or knowledge, you can't have one knowledge, or two knowledge, or three knowledges, or like that, you can't count them. Or money. Right? You can't have one money or two monies or three monies or happiness. Right? Instead, you have a little or a lot. Okay? So you can have a lot of water or a little water or a lot of knowledge or a little knowledge. So that's how you indicate the amount that you have for uncountable nouns. You have a little or a lot. The other rule is that you can't use a or an with an uncountable noun, right? Because you can't count them, you can't have one of them, which means you can't have a water or a knowledge or a money or a happiness. And the other rule is that you can't put s at the end, right? Because you can't have two or three or four, that means you can't pluralize it. So you can't have waters or knowledge or money. So with uncountable nouns, you can't have a or an, and you can't have s at the end. The thing that causes so many problems for non-native speakers is that there are many confusing uncountable nouns in English. So here are the most common nouns that are uncountable in English that cause problems for non-native speakers. The first one is information. In English, you can't have one information or two informations or three informations. You can only have a lot of information or a little bit of information. In other languages, information is a countable noun, but in English, it is not. It is uncountable. Here are other examples. Advice, okay? You can't have an advice and you can't have two advices. 
You can only have a lot of advice or a little bit of advice. Also, homework, work, research, luggage, furniture, news, traffic, clothing, and bread. So all of these nouns are uncountable in English, which is confusing because, right, something like bread, it is intuitive to want to say, I have a bread, or I have two breads, or three breads, but you're not allowed to do this in English. I don't know how these nouns ended up being uncountable, but they are, and you need to memorize these. There are others, again, these are just the most common ones that I see cause students the most problems. So you want to memorize that these are uncountable. Because these are uncountable nouns, that means in English we have to add things when we use them in our writing and speaking. The most common thing we will add is a piece of, okay? For example, a piece of information. So this turns information basically into a countable noun. So I can't have one information or two informations or three informations. However, I can have a piece of information and I can have two pieces of information. So because piece is a countable noun, you are then allowed to use a, and you can add s to the end of pieces to pluralize it, right? So this is, this is how we use information in effect as a countable noun. We do the same thing with advice. He gave me a piece of advice, right? Or he gave me many pieces of advice. It's the same thing with news. We do the same thing with a piece of clothing. And it's the same thing with bread. So instead of saying, I had a bread with breakfast, you say, I had a piece of bread with breakfast. I highlight this one because I see this mistake a lot. Another important concept in the context of countable and uncountable nouns is when you should use much or many. Simply put, you use many with countable nouns and you use much with uncountable nouns. For example, I have many friends. Friend is a countable noun, so you can have one friend or two friends or three friends, and therefore we use many. And you use much with uncountable nouns like knowledge, so I don't have much knowledge about that topic. If you have a hard time remembering when to use much and when to use many, here's a useful trick. So uncountable starts with a U. So we should use much with uncountable nouns because much also has a U. So that's an easy way to remember. Much is used with uncountable nouns. If you can't remember much or many, then here's a useful trick. You can just use a lot of. This is because a lot of works with both countable and uncountable nouns. For example, I have a lot of friends. This means exactly the same thing as I have many friends. Or I don't have a lot of knowledge about that topic. This also means the same thing as I don't have much knowledge about that topic. And in English, we use a lot of a lot. Uh, so it sounds very natural if you use it. However, I would recommend that you learn the grammar of much and many so that you are not stuck always having to use a lot of. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like as well as consider subscribing. We would really appreciate it. It helps us a lot. Thank you for your attention. That's it for today. I will see you in a future lesson.